How's it going guys? Today we're going to be working on uh, an older Dynamark riding lawnmower. It's a 36 inch twin blade, so let's get right into it. Just working on some stuff here. We got another delivery of a freebie. So uh, this is an 8 horse, 36 inch. Uh, it's a twin blade, which is weird for a 36 inch. Electric start, if you notice that. So electric start must have just come out and they were marketing that as uh, something, you know, a feature that you you couldn't go without the decks in solid condition other than the little chunk that it's missing there at the bottom. So the guy that uh, dropped it off to us said we could have it for free. Um, said that it didn't run. It ran a couple years ago. But uh, if we got it running and uh, fixed it up and sold it, he said maybe we could cut him in on the, uh, on the deal. So we'll definitely do that. And that's how we get a, a lot of the stuff for free that uh, our customers just drop off because we do stuff like that. So we just got one tire that's flat. We'll have to get a tube in that. So that's about uh, 12 bucks. You can see somebody's done the wiring though. Look at. Okay, so for how old this machine is, these are new wires. I can tell right away, guys. I can tell right away. So these are old wires here. See how the red's kind of faded, guys? You look at these here, you can see bright red. So that's all been changed. So with the hood popped up, it looks like it's got a brand new battery in it. But when I put that on charge yesterday, uh, and I checked it today with the multimeter, it's only got six volts to it. So uh, that battery's got to come out. So I took off the uh, the wing nuts here, and I'm disconnecting all the wiring. The guy said that it ran, so uh, I'm hoping that once I hook up my booster pack to it, uh, we should be able to uh, maybe spray some carb cleaner. Uh, into the carb and uh, see if this thing fires up and this riding lawnmower has a, an eight horse Briggs and Stratton engine on it and uh, Somebody's gone and replaced the solenoid down here. That's a newer solenoid So the guy said that it ran so uh, I'm hoping that it has spark with the older point system uh, But if it doesn't uh, well, we have those uh, replacement coils that we got for uh, $18 from China and uh, they should fit this model engine so if we uh, need to we can uh, do another coil swap on this thing as well okay so an easy way to uh, see if all your uh, wires are uh, routed properly and uh, your solenoid works and everything else is just to uh, come over here I got my eliminator battery booster it's off right now but I'll turn it on in a second I've hooked up our uh, main 12 volt line to uh, our solenoid here and the 12 volt back to the key switch. I've also hooked up our ground. So I'm gonna turn this on and uh, we do have the brake engaged. So just in case there's a, a brake safety switch somewhere down there, we have that engaged and we have the deck lifted in the highest position. So on this one, um, basically you just uh, push that button there and you drop this forward and the deck drops uh, a couple inches. So right now we're testing the starting circuit uh, we're not going to be checking for spark just yet. So what I'm going to do is just turn the key switch and uh, see if the engine spins over. See if the starter engages uh, just to let me know that uh, the starting circuit is okay. Okay, so we got the eliminator turned on and I'm just going to give her a turn of the key. See what happens. There we go. So it turns over, so we know that the starting circuit is good. So now that we know that the starting circuit is okay, guys, uh, we'll go ahead and check for spark. So I'll go and get my spark tester, hook it up to the high tension lead. We'll turn it over and see if we got spark. Okay, so we got our spark tester hooked up, one end plugged into the high tension lead, the other end from the spark tester plugged onto the spark plug, and I'm just gonna turn the key here, and we're gonna see if we got spark. So I'm not sure if you guys could see that, but we do have plenty of spark. So I'm gonna spray some carb cleaner into it. Now I know that there is compression on this because uh, I went manually and turned the flywheel just to make sure that the engine wasn't seized. And every now and then, right here, once we get to the uh, compression stroke, I can feel it start to tighten up. So I know that we do have compression. So theoretically, guys, this thing should fire right up. Whether it'll stay running or not, uh, I'm not too sure because uh, you know, the fuel tank probably needs to be flushed, uh, the line as well, and uh, the carburetor here looks, uh, well, pretty dirty. Okay, so we got the air filter off. It's uh, pretty dirty, needs to be replaced. So uh, we get these from Stens for like two bucks. So we'll probably end up ordering a couple more of these air filters. As far as the uh, carburetor goes, well, it's uh, just as dirty as you would expect, guys. 
Uh, this is an older engine. There's all kinds of grease over it and everything, but uh, this carburetor here is the exact same as uh, the lawn flight that we worked on, so uh, should be fairly easy. A little bit of carb cleaner in there. Then we're gonna turn the key and see if she fires up. Well, it fired, so we know it's got enough compression to uh, make it spark. I might need to put more carb cleaner in there to uh, get it to actually fire up. Okay, so now I've put the throttle all the way forward so that the choke inside of the carburetor is uh, now engaged. So it should create a little bit more suction in there to the point where when I turn the key, it should fire up. Still not firing. The carb's probably so dirty that uh, it's not even pulling the carb cleaner through. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, remove this carburetor and uh, we might end up trying to spray carb cleaner directly into the cylinder, see if it fires that way. Because before I put any time, uh, effort, or money into this thing, I wanna know that the engine will run uh, on a fuel source. And that'll let me know that it's got enough compression to uh, stay running. And to uh, get this carburetor off, guys, we're just gonna be using a Phillips screwdriver. And uh, there's two bolts. There's one under here that uh, sometimes it's a little harder to get. So you might have to remove your muffler in order to get that off. Okay, so as I suspected, um, I was able to get the top screw out, but uh, not the bottom one. So in order to get this uh, muffler off, guys, you just want to uh, take a pair of uh, pliers, bend up these little metal tabs that they have here that go over the, uh, the bolts. That just keeps them from backing themselves out. Uh, but once you bend up those tabs, you can uh, unbolt those and uh, hopefully that thing will just pull right off. Okay, so that came off pretty easy. There was uh, one more bolt uh, up at the front of the machine. You guys can see it came off right from there. But uh, now we should be able to have enough room to get at uh, that bolt right up under there. So I'm gonna try it with uh, just a Phillips screwdriver and if that doesn't work and it's in there tight, then I'll use a, a socket. Okay, so now we have uh, both bolts out of the intake neck. So now we have to get this one right there. Uh, just that's like a support for the carburetor. We'll just disconnect the uh, fuel line somewhere either here or up there. Okay, so we got the uh, bolt off of the bracket there. Uh, I just wanted to take the time to show you guys that uh, there's little plastic pieces that go inside of uh, the throttle here where the linkage connects to the actual throttle on the carburetor. Don't lose those guys because uh, they're super hard to find. Uh, a lot of these old carburetors have them because uh, the holes on the throttle levers themselves are bigger than the linkage. So they use those little plastic sleeves in there and uh, yeah guys, they're super hard to get. The guy at our parts store, he found one off of an old used carb that we needed for the, the lawn flight there. So make sure you don't lose them or break them. But uh, basically, we're just going to disconnect the spring, uh, the linkage when we pull this off and uh, rotate it enough to uh, get all that off. So I'm gonna clean the carburetor and uh, flush out the fuel tank. And then uh, we're gonna try this again with the carburetor hooked up to it. Okay, so uh, we're in the shop at the workbench and uh, I can tell that this thing has uh, had a carb kit installed onto it because if you look at the uh, shape and the color uh, and the condition of the carburetor, you can tell there's some dirt on it. Uh, there's a bunch of paint and stuff. But if we look up here, at the uh, air fuel adjustment screws. They're nice and shiny and if we look down here at the bottom you guys can see that's all nice and shiny and it appears to be a new gasket. So somebody's went tried to fire this thing up I'm guessing it didn't start so they went and bought a carb kit uh, they installed the carb kit and uh, it still didn't start so they got rid of it. Uh, like I said, we ended up getting uh, this machine for free uh, as a trade-in, so uh, I'm just trying to get it fired up and running with uh, the least amount of money possible. So what I'm going to do is disassemble this. Uh, I'm going to remove all of our air fuel screws, our, our metering jet there. I'm going to remove the main adjuster down here. Uh, I'm going to pull the bowl off, and we're going to get as much of it uh, disassembled as possible and then I'm going to throw this into my ultrasonic cleaner. Now, if you guys don't have an ultrasonic cleaner, uh, you can use a can of carb cleaner. So go out to your uh, local Napa or uh, parts store, wherever you guys go, and uh, you guys can get a can of carb cleaner or a brake cleaner. And uh, basically, guys, you just want to spray down the entire thing and get it as clean as possible. You don't want any little bits of... Uh, dirt or debris. You could even uh, bring this thing into a dishwasher or uh, you know your kitchen sink 
and uh, use some uh, lukewarm water or uh, some hot water, you know, to uh, really get at the, um, you know, the more debris in the corners where all the grease and dirt builds up. And you guys should be able to clean this thing up. So uh, I'll bring you back uh, once I have this thing cleaned up. Okay, so I've pulled the little bung out of here. That's uh, this guy right there. I just used a small adjustable and I've pulled the bottom uh, adjuster off of the sediment bowl. So if we look here, we can see there's a couple little bits of debris. And if we flip the carb up, we can see that, uh, well, it's fairly clean. It's not as dirty as I thought it would be, but uh, I'm gonna blast this thing anyways, just to uh, be sure. With a standard screwdriver, we're gonna get that jet out of there. So that just unthreads, guys. And then, uh, like I said, we're gonna flip it up. I'm gonna remove this one up here and that one right there as well. We're gonna remove the float as well. To do that, you just have to uh, pull your pin here and uh, that'll come right out. So we got a little bit of uh, hot water here from the kettle. Just gonna pour that in. A Little bit of our uh, Indo 701 industrial strength degreaser. We're just gonna pour a little bit of that in there. Not too much. You guys gotta remember that stuff's concentrated, so you don't need much. The rest of our water in there to mix it all together. And then we should be good to pop the carb in. Okay, so I'm gonna be using my basket here and we got the carburetor laid in there. I'm gonna take the long metering rod. We're just gonna uh, lay that in there and then I'm also gonna put the uh, float in there just to get that a little bit cleaned up. Turn this sucker on for about, uh, oh, I'd say maybe uh, 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so we got a nice clean workspace here to uh, put the carburetor back together. The uh, float here, that came out nice and clean. We got our metering jet here. So uh, there's all kinds of little tiny holes in this thing and uh, they all go down the shaft. Some of them are up at the top there. And I'm just gonna take my oxyacetylene tip cleaner here to uh, poke those through and uh, make sure they're clean and free of debris. Okay, and we got the uh, carburetor here. That came out uh, pretty clean. There's still uh, quite a bit of uh, old paint on it. Uh, but I'm not too worried about that because uh, the inside is uh, pretty clean and uh, you know down here where the float and the bowl goes that's all nice and clean now you can see I got the the main jet back in there as well and I've taken my uh, compressor through it uh, blown it all out make sure all the uh, debris is out of it I could end up getting this carburetor right here looking something like this and uh, that's the old carburetor off of the uh, lawn flight that we had um, but that's a little bit too much work. I spent uh, quite a bit of time with the uh, wire wheel uh, getting that thing all uh, polished up like that and uh, it's just not worth it guys. So uh, for something that I got for free I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on. Uh, like I said I just wanted to uh, clean the carb and uh, we'll put a battery onto it uh, to get it fired up. Uh, make sure that it runs on its own and then uh, you know once we have the engine running then we can start looking at uh, the belt and the deck uh, and the blades and the spindles and everything else uh, because uh, again you know I might only be able to get like 200 bucks for this thing so I don't want to put that much time or that much effort into it. So I got the uh, carburetor here and uh, the only thing I've done is uh, put the float on with our rod and uh, our little uh, needle valve in there and I've hooked up my uh, pressure tester and I've pumped just over 5 psi into it and uh, you guys can see there is a slow leak uh, so it, it should be holding at uh, just about 5 psi, but uh, we can see here that uh, it is going down over time. So what that uh, tells me is that my needle valve in here isn't sealing to that brass seat. So I'm going to have to replace the needle valve under there uh, with a newer one with a rubber tip. If you have a metal seat like this one, you need to run a needle valve with a rubber tip on top of it. But like I've said in uh, the lawn flight video, these rubber tips get a, a little bit of uh, deformation just from uh, being pushed into that, uh, that seat. And uh, after a while, guys, they will leak. So you're gonna have to replace that. So uh, let me go and find one and uh, we'll replace it. And this thing shouldn't leak air. Okay, so I found the one that I need and uh, the part number. You guys can see we get it from Stens. The part number is a 525-063 needle valve kit for, that's your Briggs & Stratton number there, for a 394681. So let me rip that out. We'll uh, install that, throw that one in the garbage, but I will be saving the little clip that comes off of it because uh, you can never have too many of those. 
and uh, we'll get this carburetor back together and uh, hopefully pump it up and uh, put at least 5 PSI. Uh, normally I try to test to 10 but uh, you only need to test to 5 and uh, as long as it holds 5 PSI you will know that uh, your carburetor won't leak once you install it. I gotta tell you guys, being able to go into my parts drawer and grab the part that I need uh, for the job that I'm doing is like one of the best things ever. So we got a new needle valve here with a new rubber tip and a new clip. Uh, I saved the clip from the old one and put it back into the bag. Uh, just so I can keep it. You guys want to make sure that the uh, float is level too. You don't want it up too high, you don't want it down too low. So with the uh, new needle valve installed, we're going to come down to our pump and we're going to start pumping it up. And you guys should be able to tell right away. Look at this. Boom. So that's what new parts do for you guys. So now we're holding PSI well above 5 PSI and uh, that's good. So this carburetor is ready to go back together. It seals. Um, I've leveled the float, so that's good to go. Put it all together the same way you took it apart, and uh, we'll get this back onto the machine. I still have to uh, flush the fuel tank, and uh, that should be it, guys. We should be able to fire this thing up. And if you guys want to learn more about this uh, carburetor tester, uh, you can go and check out uh, how to pressure test carburetors. It's one of my videos. I'll link it right now in the top right of your screen. You should see a thing pop up. That thing wasn't cheap though. It was like 110 bucks, but uh, it was probably one of the best tools we've ever bought. And for our bottom adjuster there, we're going to uh, thread that all the way in just until it's snug. And then we're gonna back it off about uh, one and three quarters of a turn. And uh, basically once this machine is running, you want to adjust it in. So tighten it up to the point where it starts to sputter then back it out to the left, loosening it to the point where it starts to sputter, and then you want to adjust it to that middle point. And uh, a baseline is about one and a half to two turns, so normally I go about one and three quarters of a turn. For this little hole under here, we have this little bung, so that's why I'm using uh, an adjustable wrench for that. And uh, this, guys, that just basically uh, threads in all the way to uh, prevent anything from getting in there. And uh, for this long one here, the metering rod, we're gonna put that in. That one, guys, it threads in all the way. You don't have to worry about uh, adjusting it uh, high or low. It's this one here that you have to adjust. So uh, same thing, we're gonna thread that into that hole right there, just until the point where it's snug, and then we're gonna back it out uh, one and a half to two turns. So again, one and three quarters of a turn should do. Well, that's it for part one, guys. If you enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You can uh, click over here to subscribe, and you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.